All right guys, today I'm going to show you how to make an awesome display board for your miniatures. So I've decided to copy Cami from Paint Stuff Four Ups idea and make a display board out of a picture frame. I basically went to my local Ikea and picked up a generic picture frame. This one's a bit bigger than I would have liked, but it's only hard in stock, so that's what we've gone with. This will hopefully give me something that I can display my miniatures on at the end of my videos. So the reason I'm doing this project is that old turntable just isn't cutting the cheese anymore. When I decided to put all the basing stuff on this with all the different tufts and stuff, the glue and sand has gone down into the mechanism and it no longer works properly. Um, and it is just really annoying watching it stuttering on the camera. I will try and reuse the tufts on this because I think it's an absolute waste to get rid of these. I think we should use these on my new board just as a wee reminder to... You served me well. You served me well over the year of the channel. But unfortunately, it's time to lay them to rest. So... Okay. Sorry mate, I, I fucked you. So first thing 7th, we want to make up some of these rock moulds from some plaster of Paris. I got these rock moulds from Woodland Scenics, I think I just bought them off Amazon. I'm just going to go with a 1 to 1 ratio of water to plaster of Paris. Make sure you stir it really thoroughly so there's no big lumps of plaster in it, you want this to be nice and smooth. The next step is simple enough, all you're doing is pouring the plaster into the moulds, make sure not to make a mess. I probably shouldn't be doing this when I prepare my food, but I'm lazy and I want to do it next to a tap. I would leave these for a good couple of hours to set full. While I waited for these to dry, I made sure to have another task ready to do. This is the picture frame I've gone with, as you can see it's a bit bigger than I would like, but I didn't have time to wait for them to come back in stock. I don't think the next step was actually necessary, but I decided to seal the edge of the picture frame with my hot glue gun. One thing I did learn from this experience was to invest in a better glue gun. This cheapy crap one I got from Amazon was absolutely rubbish. It hardly even got hot enough to heat the glue, so if you have one you can recommend, please do so in the comments. So I wanted to create a backdrop to this display piece, so I decided to go with a two-tiered cliff. And for that, I'm going to use polystyrene. To make sure this fits properly, I put it into the picture frame so I can measure where I need to cut it with the hot wire cutter. Once I've got the square bit of polystyrene in the same dimensions as the picture frame, it's time to mark and cut out the base for the first cliff face. I then put the top cliff layer on the polystyrene and used this as a mask to draw out where the bottom cliff would be. This meant I was able to get the two-tiered cliff that I was after. Some Gorilla Glue and some wooden skewers were used to hold the cliff in place. I then used something heavy to weigh it down while it dried over the next couple of hours. I wanted to make sure this was sturdy and stuck in place and wouldn't come up by a later date. Next up, we don't want the bottom to be completely flat, that's not very realistic. So we're going to use some sculpta mold to create some undulations in the landscape. Once the place layer is done, it's time to press our plaster of pads rock moulds onto the cliff face. I use a sculptor mould to not just blend the rocks together, but also to stick them to the cliff face. So guys, um, this is a lot harder than they make it look like in all the videos. <laughs> Blending all the cliffs in together is actually a bit of a nightmare, if I'm being honest, because the bits of the rock keep falling off. I think what I've taken from this is don't cheap out and buy a cheap glue gun. Get I'm going to buy a proper, like, good quality one because those two ones I got were like a tenner each, and they're just they're just shit. They just don't work properly. Um, you get like two bursts of glue and then it just needs to sit for like half an hour to recharge. So we won't be using that again. Um, don't cheap out on a glue gun. Aye. Let's get back to it. So for the rocks we're going to go with a traditional leopard spotting technique. I've decided to go with a light grey, a kind of ochre colour and a dark chocolatey brown. 
You are wanting to water these down quite heavily just to make sure you're only getting a little bit of the colour poking through. As you can see my colours are a bit strong because I didn't water it down enough. We do want to leave a little bit of the white rock face showing because we are now going to go over the whole thing in a black wash. This will tie all the different colours together and hopefully give a nice realistic finish. Just remember that when it's dry and if you're not happy you can always give it another coat of the black just to bring it down a bit more. Just remember when you're finished with it, if there's any excess water lying about, suck it up with some kitchen roll so it doesn't reactivate the water the compound. So I think we're done now guys. I've given it another coat or two of the black just to bring it on more of the details. I think I went too heavy with the original ochre and the brown colour, so it is a bit too prominent. So I've tried to dull it down with the black, but at the end of the day, rocks is rocks, you know, so let's hope that once all the terrain is on and the basin covers and the grass and stuff's there, it'll look all right. That's what I'm hoping anyway. I suppose I can always go back after the fact and add more black, but for now, that'll do. You want to stop fucking hassling me, pal? <coughs> mm -hmm. Stop fucking hassling me. Try to film a wee segment here for my videos. I now decide to give all the areas that are going to have the ground cover a nice covering of brown paint. This means that if we do miss any bits, the white undercoat will not show through. Once the paint's all dry, I've got a 50-50 mix of brown tile grout and garden soil. You do want to make sure your garden soil is dried out, so you want to bake it in the oven before you use it. Just don't tell the missus, as this bit is messy and tile grout, grout, tile grout, tile grout goes everywhere, I've decided to do this outside. To make sure this dries rock solid, we first put down a coating of PVA glue to stick the tile grout to. As I've gone with quite a heavy covering of tile grout to give loads of kind of lumps and bumps like real life, we're going to have to use isopropyl alcohol to coat the entire surface. This is required to break the surface tension, allowing the next layer of glue, which I'm pipetting onto the tile grout, to seep into it and dry rock solid. As you can see here, the tile grout has absorbed all the glue and alcohol and is absolutely solid to the touch. Also remember to wash away all the tail grout that is spilled as this will stain everything that it touches. Now for ground cover we're going to copy this piece that I made before. This piece looks okay but unfortunately it doesn't really have a backdrop apart from the trees which you can see through and also the fact that I build it on a polystyrene base means it is really really flimsy and breaks really easily. So guys, as you can see, this is dried absolutely rock solid. Uh, it did take all weekend to finally dry out so it's been a bit of a pain. There's a couple of gaps I can see from this angle that I don't like but what I'll do is I'll just hide them with uh, some trees, just put a wee tree in front of it and then you can't see it. That's my plan anyway. So, speaking of grass, we're going to try and emulate this display board here. I, could, I did do one that was kind of a more arid grass for my friend's Dunland army, but I think I quite like the summer kind of bright, vibrant, green, luscious kind of grass look. So, uh, all the little bushes and stuff as well, I really like that. I did try to do water effects here and as you can see it has come down and ruined the grass so just ignore that. I'm going to be much better with my water effects on this board. I'm going to try and use resin for the first time so we've got that to look forward to. I'm sure I'll make an arse of that. So I've got all these static grass here, loads of different packs. Um, oh, oh. How'd that get in there? Just, just ignore that. Try to remember which ones it was I used because it was quite a while ago I did that board. I believe it was summer. 
And they aren't here. Where did I leave them? So I've got all these different colours of static grass, uh, winter, spring, autumn, etc. But I believe I use these, which is why they're in the tubs, 2ml summer and 4ml summer. So that's what I'm going to use to replicate this. But I do think I might actually throw in some 6ml summer in some patches where I want it to be longer because I've got more space here. This is a much smaller board, so that's my plan. Let's get cracking. So I start off by filling up my static grass applicator with some of the 2ml summer. I want to create an even coating of 2ml grass across the entire board. As the static grass is only 2ml, it will create a nice small layer of grass that we can build upon. I coat the area in basic glue where I want the static grass to be. Remember to leave some gaps in your glue so you can get some of the brown grout showing through. I would much rather do this in one go, but as I didn't have enough static grass, I had to do one layer, shake it all off, and reuse the extra grass that had fallen off. Remember, for our static grass, you can attach the crocodile clip to a nail and dig it into the board. However, I prefer to just hold it underneath, as it saves digging the nail out after we've finished. Don't worry about how it looks at the moment, this will look a lot nicer once the basin glue has dried. I'd recommend when you do it, keep your basin glue nice and thin, no big dollops left. Now for the 4mm static grass, we want to use this to create longer patches in the board. You can see some dark weird patches where it's dried strange because I left the glue too thick. We'll just make sure and cover these up with the 4mm static grass. I would much rather use a spray glue, but unfortunately I don't have anything, so I'm just going to have to use the basin glue again. Just create lots of different patches across the board, trying to make it as random as possible. We don't want to go over the top using this stuff. So that's the grass done, the 2mm and the 4mm, and as you can see here, it's got this nice lovely texture to it. If we zoom in close, we can see all the different kind of patches where I put the glue down and sprinkled on the 4mm stuff. It's looking really good, I'm pretty impressed by it. I think the grass is really corresponding well with the nice white chalky hills and the, also the kind of brown bits that break up the grass is also really adding to the effect that I'm after. So I know I said I was going to give it a bit more depth and do some 6mm summer. But as you've seen, there's a load of mess when it comes to using static grass that you don't really see on YouTube and I just cannot be fucked with it. So get that in the fucking bin, we're not doing that. We're just going to move on to the kind of fine detailing now and then painting up the rims to make it all nice. Let's get cracking. The first thing I want to do is create some realistic looking rubble around the bases of the cliffs. To do this, I use patchy planes, which is one of Geek Gaming's base, base ready materials. I just scatter this along the foots of the hills. You don't want to go overboard with this as it will ruin the piece, so just be careful and make sure it looks as realistic as possible. Once there's a base layer down, I do use the finer sand just to cover up over the rocks, just to blend it all together. I know I said earlier I was going to use trees to cover the cracks in the cliff face, however I have since decided I am just going to cover it with some bushes. I just use fast drying basing glue before shoving in some different colours of bushes before blending them in with some foam flocks. I use these foam flocks to put some scatter across the grass. This gives the appearance of some little kind of bushes and scrubland forming. I make sure to use different colours of these, starting with a base layer of a dark one and then highlighting with some lighter colours. Just sprinkle these on the board for just now and we'll seal it in later.
So guys, this might look like a finished piece, but we've not done the most important part yet. We've not sealed any of this down, so it's all just, I shouldn't have done that. So we need to seal it. And this is a scary bit. I hate this bit. Because once you start spraying this all with water, it looks like shit. It really does look horrific and it looks like you've ruined it. And I'm worried about the, the coloured like water dripping down over the rock face and ruining the rock face. So we need to be careful. And we need to remember, I tried not to go overboard with the rocks and the, the big bushes and the, the logs because at the end of the day, this is a display piece, so we need to be able to put miniatures on it. We don't want just crowded with hunters and stuff. It's not like a model railway, so we need space to actually put our army on it or model or whatever it is we're, we're showing off. So remember to keep some open ground. And that's the benefit of this kind of foam flop. It looks like vegetation is growing, but it's really flat, so you can put bases on it. So it's perfect. Yeah, let's get cracking. I'm really, um, I've been procrastinating for a while leaving this off because I really hate this bit. Because you'll see, it, it really started, it really looks fucking terrible. Let's get going. So we're just doing the same thing again. We're giving everything a coating of isopropyl alcohol just to break the surface tension. Just remember when using the spray to do it from a height so you're not disturbing the ground cover. Then soaking absolutely everything in this really watered down PVA glue. So this is one of these moments where, oh fucking hell, there's glue everywhere. You can see that it's dripping down the rock face, the different colors, and I wish I knew what it was gonna look like when it dried, because if that looks really nice, like nice green moss, I'd just leave it, but whereas, because I don't really know, I'm not sure if I should dab the excess glue off or not, you know? It's an absolute conundrum. I'm gonna leave it. I think, I'm hoping it'll look like a nice green moss. Fingers crossed, guys. Thankfully, once it dried, it was all looking fantastic. This just meant there was only a couple of things left to do. Paint the sides and the rims in black. I also want to do some tufts and some flowers across the whole piece, and also the water effect. I've got this Vallejo water texture. I know I promised resin, but I wanna get this build done. And I've got this. The only thing I'm worried about is I've used this in the past and it has dried really clear. I think I poured it on too thick. So I am gonna read the instructions and it does say only do a, a layer of three mil. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna put a bit of camo shade in it. So let's get cracking. Alright guys, that's us finished. I do think I maybe went a bit overboard with the tufts and the flowers, but I really like it. Um, the, hopefully the pond will dry nice and clear, but all that's left is to get some minis 
and there's some battle shots. Alright guys, if you want to see more content like this, do give me a wee like and don't forget to subscribe. Also let me know in the comments what you think. Did I go too heavy on the tufts or have I just hit the nail on the head? And remember if you want to support the channel, I do now have a Patreon. Feel free to go have a wee look, I'll put a link in the description. And of course a big thank you to the Patreons that I have already signed up. I didn't think anyone would do it, but thank you very much, you are very very kind. I'll see you in the next one guys. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to give my bell a good old ring. Wow. Right, quick bait time. Ooh. Enough of that shit. Oh, will you fucking shut up? Try to fucking film, man. <sighs> fucking flight path, what a stupid prick. <laughs> I thought it grasped myself a bit there. <laughs> oh well, that's the jumper going in the wash. Fucking hell. Also, more mess that you don't get shown is fucking glue dripping down everywhere onto my dining table. Absolutely everywhere. Isopropyl alcohol, absolutely ringing. Just, I should have put some kitchen paper down actually, that would have been the smart thing to do, wouldn't it? Alright guys, in this video I'm going to show you fucking fuck. Why did I struggle so hard to say five words? That was a bit weird. Um, Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to make an awesome display board for your miniatures. 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 Miniature. Get a grip of yourself, John. Fucking hell. It's five words, John. You can do it. Alright, guys, today. <laughs> I've fucking totally thrown it out. <clears throat> Alright, guys, today. If 